Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part 2 on lecture and permutations and combinations. In case you haven't watched part 1, you can click over here. If you have, let's get started. All right, so at the end of the first lecture, where we ended up is this, right? Your friend came, he gave you five unique letters and he asked you to find all the possible ways you could arrange them. You found out that it's just n factorial, right? n is 5, so 5 factorial. You said it's 120, he said great. He gives you another tile, but this time it's not unique. It's an extra a, right? So you have two a's a b a c a d and e right so you have six tiles now he asks you what are the ways you can arrange them now and you tell it's six factorial he says no because remember factorial is for unique terms now let's look at how we can deal with duplicates all right so this is what we have we have a a b c d e right you have two a's one b one c one d and one e now the problem what happens with duplicates is that we don't know how many times duplicate um arrangements are being created right and there's a very simple way to find that out so Just for our uh, understanding, let's mark the two blocks of A with a small number so that you know what you're talking about, right? So let's say this guy was A one and A two, right? They're both A's, they're both the same, but just for our reference, we mark it with the one and a two. All right, now let's look at an arrangement that could happen. Suppose you have something like A one, B, C, A two, D, and an E. All right, this arrangement is valid because it's different from the initial arrangement. But there's a problem here. What if I switch the A's? Isn't it the same arrangement? Do we count it as two or we count it as one? To understand this, let's look at it in a different way. All right, so now I've split it up into two ways you could get this, right? So you have A one, B, C, A two, D, E, right? Now let's forget about this. Let's forget about the numbers. Look at this, just this arrangement, right? You have A B C A D E. Now this could be got either by doing this. Or by doing this, right? You could use the a1 and a2, or you could use the a2 and the a1. But they are all essentially a single arrangement. So what's happening here is because you have two a's, right? You're getting two different arrangements, which are actually duplicates. Now the question here is how do you calculate these duplicates, right? How do you find out how many duplicates are being created because of a duplicate set of terms? The way to do this is simple. Think about how you initially thought about the first problem. You had five unique terms, right? And you wanted to find out all the different ways you could find arrangements, right? And you came up with five factorial, n unique terms, n factorial unique ways to arrange them. Now look at the a's. For your friend, the a's are the same. For you, you treat them as unique first. So what you're going to do is you're going to try and eliminate the duplicate arrangements by counting all the possible ways that the a's could be arranged. So look at the a1, a2, and look at the a2 and a1, right? Those are two ways that two unique a's can be arranged, right? Two unique a's, a1, a2, can be arranged in two factorial. Two factorial is two into one, which is two, correct? Just to understand this now, let's say that your friend, who at this point you hate, gives you another a, right? Now, let's say this is a3. Let's say we make this arrangement. Now, if you look back at this, this could be A three, another A here, and we can mark this as A three. This cannot be got just by two uh, different arrangements. You can find six different arrangements where you would simply get this thing. You have one two three. You have two one three. You could have three one two. You could have three two one. You could have two three one. Right? There are six different ways. And why six? Because you have three unique A's now. Correct, which are actually du duplicates. But to count the number of duplicate arrangements, find the number of ways your a's could be arranged. Right, so you have three different a's. So to find out the number of arrangements, three factorial. So now what you can do is you can treat these as unique letters, and then just divide by the number of times these duplicate arrangements can occur. Right. So here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven unique letters. Now. Remember, you really don't have seven unique letters. You have five unique letters, right? A, B, C, D, E. But just to calculate this, think of it in this way: Suppose you had seven unique letters. What would the number of arrangements be? Seven factorial, right? So let's write seven factorial. But at this point, you know that three of them are not unique. They are duplicates. You have two duplicates of A. So what you're going to do is you're going to divide them by the number of duplicate arrangements that can occur. And you know three A's are there, so they could be arranged in three factorial ways. So divide this by three factorial. That's it. This comes out to be seven into six, into five, into four, into three, into two, into one, which is actually three factorial, right? You can just stop there, and this is going to be three factorial. 
So you can just cancel this out, right? That uh, five fours are 20, 20 into six is 120, 120 into seven is 840, right? So 840 ways, right? You could arrange this. Now, we've taken care of the duplicate arrangements because we have divided it by three factorial. Now, let's come up with a generic formula to use whenever you've, you're faced with this kind of a problem. So whenever you get um, a list of terms where you have duplicates, what you do is treat all of them as unique and count n, right? So your n would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the formula is going to be n factorial upon all the possible duplicates, right? So duplicates of a factorial into duplicates of b factorial into all of them, right? So here you see that you just have duplicates of a, you don't have duplicates of b. So n is going to be seven, so seven factorial. How many duplicates of a? Three, right? So da is three, so three factorial into how many duplicates of b? One, right? So one factorial is one, so you don't have to multiply that. You can just write one into how many duplicates of c? One into how many duplicates of d? One, and e one, right? So this is essentially seven factorial upon three factorial, which is 840, which is what we found here, right? So this is a generic formula that you can use to find the total number of arrangements when you have duplicates in your list. All right, so I know that this can be a little confusing to understand at first, but go over the video again, really think about this because once you get this concept, the rest of the sums become really easy, right? Think about it again. Try and think through how these duplicate terms create duplicate arrangements and how you can identify the number of duplicate arrangements. Right? Once you get this, these sums start becoming super easy. All right, so this was part two on lecture and permutations and combinations, where we saw how to find the number of arrangements when you have duplicate terms in your list. To find out what happens in part three, your friend, who we all hate by this point, he comes back and says, I want you to find all the possible arrangements, but I want C and D to always be together. Now what do you do? Well, I could tell you, or you could just wait for part three. Trust me, it gets really interesting. <laughs> Alright, so I'll see you in part 3. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. Also leave me a comment if things weren't clear. I can make another video explaining this in detail or take another example maybe. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, spread the knowledge.